Hello and welcome to my devlog. I'm making a split screen multiplayer shooter called Couch Combat. In the past month of development, I've been doing a lot of animation, because if I want to release this game, the guns need to get a bit of an upgrade. This is already the second time I'm redoing all the gun animations in my game, so I need to make sure that they are all as close to perfect as I can get them. I'm shooting to get all these animations to professional quality. And when I say that, I don't really mean AAA game quality, as my game has low poly models anyway, so that level of detail isn't needed or possible. I want each animation to be snappy, satisfying, and not janky. It shouldn't distract from the gameplay, but it should be nice to look at. That's what I consider a professional standard. And if you are just starting out with game development and want to make your own games of high quality graphics, then you might be interested in today's sponsor, Core. Core is the new PC game creation platform that allows anyone who's interested in game development to create, share, and play multiplayer games. Core is available from the Epic Game Store and is completely free. You can reimagine other creators' games and use thousands of free music, sound, and art assets. And if you want to get more advanced, you can build your own games from scratch. You can code your own game logic in Lua and make your own scripts and 3D models. And since Core is powered by Unreal Engine, your games will have high quality AAA graphics. Core also has built-in multiplayer, so when your game is complete, you can publish it instantly for others to play. Development in Core is fast for single-player and multiplayer games, and by using the Core Perks program, you get 50% revenue share, which is double Roblox's revenue share. Many Core creators have been able to pay their bills, quit their day jobs, and even finance their dream cars with the help of the Perks program. Use the links in the description and pinned comment to download Core for free to start creating your own game. But in order to achieve these somewhat high standards of animation, I need to start with a good foundation. So I'm going to do my research and put into place all the necessary parts to ensure professional quality. The first layer of the foundation is just the arm rig itself. I'm going to redo the arm model and rig, and because I'm not very good at 3D modeling humans, I'm going to follow this very convenient and brand new tutorial by Single Sapling Games. By following this tutorial and the ensuing one about rigging the arm, I was able to make a model that not only looked better than my old one, but was much more functional. This new arm rig has inverse kinematics, which allows me to pose the arms with much more precision. It also has better joint topography, which keeps the arm from deforming weirdly at arm and finger joints. Now that I had a new arm rig, I got to animating some brand new guns. With the new precision I got with the arm rig, making high quality animations was a breeze. Yeah, right. The main two factors in how good an animation turns out are of skill level and the amount of iteration. In order to get an animation looking functional, you only really need to go over it once. But to get it great, well, let's just say it takes a lot of free time. And the issue is, I don't have a lot of free time. So I've been working through these animations for quite a long time, but I'm still making progress. Although these guns are all in different states of quality and progress, I've started work on 4 out of the 7 guns. The pistol was the first one I started with, and it's also the only one I'd considered mostly done. The Uzi is pretty close to done, but the reload animation needs some work. The shotgun has a ton of issues with importing its unity and is in a very janky state right now. And finally, the revolver has pretty much had no iteration, but the base is complete. I'm pretty proud of how the new pistol animations have turned out. They are by far the most satisfying out of any animation I've ever made, and I achieved this with a secret weapon. Curves. Blender has a curve editor in it, and curves basically allow you to have much more refined control over the motion that an animation takes. A basic example is just setting a keyframes interpolation mode to exponential, which will make it much snappier. This is great for shooting animations and parts of reload animations. Here is the pistol's reload animation with just the basic default curves, and here is the same animation but with some basic curve editing. It is a small difference, but the final animation ends up feeling much nicer in game. I'm going to be releasing this game fairly soon, and so if you are interested, then be sure to wishlist the game to stay up to date and get the game whenever it releases. Hitting the wishlist button is something really simple you can do to support the channel and the game, as Steam promotes games more whenever they have lots of wishlists. I've realized that if I entirely focus on one thing at a time, it works pretty well for like a week or two, but after that my productivity and quality of work goes downhill very quickly. I was able to get away with just doing a sprint to get the outrun stages done over the previous month, but I had to take a break from animation as I tried to do it all at once as well. And by the end of the second week of just animation, I was getting basically nothing done. So I decided to complete the new UI overhaul that I've been working on for a while to take a break from it. The windscreen still needs an overhaul, so I got on that. 
The process for designing the windscreen was fairly simple. I just put together a mockup in Photoshop and then used pieces of said mockup to build it in Unity with the correct UI components and everything. For the new windscreen, I needed to get a table of the player's scores ranked from best to worst, which turned out to be a pretty difficult thing to do. For someone more experienced in programming logic, this would have probably not been that hard to do, but I tried using arrays, list, and finally ended up making a new class that just stores each individual player's number, score, and amount of kills. Then I used a very basic sorting algorithm to cycle through all the players and sort them by the highest wins, and I also decided ties based on kill count. Using the new setup, I was able to finish the windscreen, and after some polish, it now looks like this. I recently did some playtesting and I found a few issues. The worst one was that the time to kill was insanely long, but this was not because the guns didn't do enough damage, but because they were actually all really hard to hit with with a controller. The best way for me to fix this would obviously be aim assist, but that's a big thing to implement. I need to do it though, so I have set aside some time after I complete the gun overhaul to finally tackle proper aim assist. But I also did some bounce changes, like reducing the spray of almost all guns in the game and also fixing some collision issues. Other smaller issues that I tackled were finally adding spark back whenever you hit things, fixing the weird spinning IK arm, and redoing how pickups work. Now they are much more in line with a normal FES and are less frustrating, although there are a few bugs with the triggers I need to work on. I also created some brand new animated skybox for the stages using a new asset I got in a humble bundle called Procedural Sky by Pinwheel Studio. Link in the description if you're interested. I even made a new skybox for the Outrun area as well. It also even has one of those cool Outrun suns, so I'm pretty happy with it. For a while now, one button has set idle in the main menu, the rules button, so I'm going to fix it. Rules are basically options that you can only set before starting a game, unlike game options or settings which you can change at any time, and these rules will mostly be over things relating to the game mode, like the amount of rounds and the scoring system, so I'm just going to go ahead and implement some new ways of playing the game, just in case endless seems a bit pointless. There will be three different arcade modes, endless, one where you just play for a set number of rounds, and one where you play until a player reaches a set amount of wins. After either of the non-endless modes ends, then you'll be sent back to the main menu and you'll see a new windscreen. I built all the logic for these game modes out and before long had them functioning, so I figured that I should get to making the actual menu. But I had made tons of menus already, a pause menu, settings menu, main menu, and a game options menu. So I figured that I could do this really quickly, maybe in like 30 minutes. Well, it turns out that I'm really, really bad at estimating development time because it took me 2 hours and 19 minutes to make the new menu, which was almost 5 times longer than what I guessed. Nevertheless, here it is, the Glorious Rules Menu. The results screen will have to wait for the next devlog though, as I'm out of time. Thanks for watching, be sure to wishlist the game on Steam if you're interested. Also don't forget to check out Corved in the link in the description. I have a big announcement coming fairly soon as well, so stay tuned. Bye.